SLT Pari Bukke Kunam Obe Hitwati Kute SLT Nama Sabadata Vaksid Panahaka Vatamak Sahita Labadi Obe Bin Patra Trupial Haida Hasak Bakwa Vatamak Himi Kiragan In your headlines tonight, cover up, court grants Colombo Crimes Division permission to question IGP over 2016 hit and run incident. No escape, Colombo Magistrates Court issues travel ban on former Minister Raj the Sena Ratna during anticipatory bail application hearing. Under oath, Colombo North Police Superintendent Sanjeeva Bandara warned over providing false evidence during Easter attacks Presidential Commission of Inquiry. Safe and sound, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva assures maximum public safety during Christmas festivities. All this and much more coming up tonight on 1st at 9, this Monday, the 23rd of December 2019. PC Anti-germ mouthwash samaging and a close-up gel lekka story eka start karanna. Hi. Hi. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very warm welcome. This is the English news service of Adha Derana 24 and I'm Indiva Riyamuatta. We begin with your top story. Now, the inclement weather prevailing in 13 districts of the country has so far claimed the lives of five people and injured six, as reported by the Disaster Management Centre. However, the Department of Meteorology states that a temporary seizing of the rains can be expected from the 25th of this month, but sudden showers could still prevail as Sri Lanka still faces the northeast monsoon. The heavy rainfall prevailing throughout the island has so far affected 65,294 people from 19,095 families in 13 districts. The Disaster Management Centre said that five deaths and six injuries have been reported so far. Across Sri Lanka, 62 houses have been destroyed, while 1,463 houses have been damaged. 17,776 people have been evacuated to 133 centres. Furthermore, Deputy Director of the Disaster Management Centre Pradeep Kodipili said that relief missions are being carried out in the affected districts involving the armed forces and the Disaster Relief Centre and warned the public to be vigilant. 13 districts been affected, so uh, 19,095 families been affected in population wise 65,294 and 120 temporary evacuation centres been set up uh, in the areas, so 4,704 families uh, and 15,510 people been temporarily accommodated. All the relief missions are being carried out by uh, under the Ministry of Defence and Disaster Management Centre and the National Disaster Relief Services Centre and 62 houses been partially damaged, uh, fully damaged and um, 1,463 uh, um, the house has been uh, partially damaged. So they have been uh, compensated uh, with the assessment, all the funds being released by the National Disaster Relief Services Centre to that particular district secretaries. So the uh, district secretaries and the division secretaries and other, all the government process already been linked with that 24-7 basis rep, all disaster management activities with the Disaster Management Centre and the National Disaster Relief Services Centre under the Ministry of Defence. The relief missions are being carried out by the National Disaster Relief Services Centre and the Disaster Management Centre in 24-7 basis under the Ministry of Defence. The military and the police performing a well-performed duties in such a rescue missions and all the disaster management activities and we are giving police cooperation to the disaster management center and the national disaster relief services center and uh, they have been uh, conducted uh, many uh, such a rescue missions around the country especially in Batikla district and the Putalam district especially as well as in uh, Anradhapura district so the prevailing weather situation is still being bad uh, with that particular area so people need to be very vigilant with that particular situation and New queries that they can call via 117 call centre number. During the past 24 hours, the highest rainfall of 208 millimetres was recorded from the Mulatiu district, with some areas submerged up to 10 feet. Eight sluice gates of the Kantale Reservoir have been opened, releasing a capacity of 1,100 cubic feet of water per second. 
Meanwhile, residents of Bakamuna have been temporarily evacuated to the Bakamuna Mahasin Vidyalaya due to the overflow of the Yoda Ala. 30 houses in the Dahaya Ala area have been flooded out due to the overflowing of the Rajangane Reservoir. The amount of spill gates opened in the reservoir has been reduced to 16 from 22 as a result of the receding water levels. However, major tanks in the Anuradhapura district still continue to overflow. Meanwhile, nearly 2,000 acres of paddy in the Vilachia area have been inundated due to the overflowing of the Vilachia Vava. Minister Issam Chandrasena and former Chief Minister of the North Central Province Issam Ranjit visited the people affected by the inclement weather in the areas of Rajangane, Kalavava and Ippavala. Dry rations were distributed by officials from the Office of the Governor of the North Central Province using private funds collected for the purpose. The Moragahakanda Kulasingha Reservoir is also currently at full capacity. The Bibile Badulla Road was temporarily closed due to the submerging of the Millabadda area between Lunugala and Pasara. 127 residents belonging to 26 families from the Hope Estate were temporarily evacuated to the Hope Tamil Vidyalaya in Hangurangketa following a landslide warning. Meanwhile, a boulder had fallen onto a house in the Spring Valley Estate in Badulla yesterday. Luckily, no residents were harmed. The Department of Meteorology stated that a decline in the inclement weather condition can be expected from the 25th of this month. Furthermore, Director of the Forecasting Division of the Department of Meteorology, Anusha Varnasuriya, stated that the reduction in the inclement weather will be short term since Sri Lanka is experiencing the northeast monsoon. Prevailing uh, showery conditions, particularly in the northern, eastern, or north central provinces, likely to reduce gradually, uh, temporarily from, uh, especially from 25th of this month. But probably it will be temporarily because this is northeast monsoon condition. So again, uh, there is a possibility for another rain still. But still, according to the data well, uh, at the moment, it is likely to reduce gradually. But until now, northern province, tomorrow also, fairly heavy falls can be expected in the northern province. Other provinces, especially in the eastern and north central provinces, uh, several dispers of showers can be filled. Uh, there is a possibility for the light showers. And afternoon thunder showers also can be expected in the Sabaragamo, Western and Southern provinces also. Gel scene action! Anti-germ mouthwash samaging in a close-up gel like a story ka start karana. Meanwhile, President Gothabe Rajapaksa visited the people displaced due to flood conditions in the Anuradhapura district and discussed relief programs with officials and political representatives. President Gotabe Rajapaksa met political representatives and state officials at the President's house in Anuradhapura this morning to discuss ongoing disaster relief programs. Then the president visited the Dutugamanu temple at Yayadeka to meet evacuees. <laughs> the president then inquired into the needs of the displaced at the Bodhi Raja Rama temple in the Yayanave area. The detention of Inspector General of Police Pooja Jayasundara and former Defence Secretary Hemasiri Fernando was once again extended by the Colombo Additional Magistrate this time till the 6th of January. The duo were taken into custody over allegations of negligence following the deadly Easter terror attacks on the 21st of April this year after revelations that although prior intelligence were received on the intents, intended attacks, the duo failed to instigate action and prevent the loss of life. In a further development, the Criminal Investigations Department informed court today that more statements are to be recorded in the ongoing investigation, including from Archbishop of Colombo, Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, after the Christmas season. Now, statements are also to be recorded from the former president, former Prime Minister, Speaker of Parliament, former Ministers Rashad Badiuddin and Rauf Hakim as well. 
Although requests have been made seeking permission to record statements from the former president and several secretaries, they are yet to be scheduled for evidence recording, the Deputy Solicitor General revealed. Now, he said that the CID will seek a court order in the future if any individual is intentionally delaying evidence recording. The CID was ordered to submit a report on the progress of the attacks on the day. Commander of the Army Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva affirms that the Tri Forces and police will ensure maximum security during the Christmas season as per instructions issued by President Gotabe Rajapaksa. Now, the Army commander made this remark when questioned about the security apparatus put in place for the festive season. <laughs> आरक्षक मंडले पशु के साथ ये लोग उसे लबादी लती है ना यानो आप ही लबादी है कि सुलुम आरक्षा सापे अन्ना भी कटोतु कर लती है ना Ex-Minister Patli Champikaranavakar was visited by a number of politicians today as well. The former minister was arrested by the Colombo Crimes Division on the 18th of this month for charges relating to a near-fatal hit-and-run traffic accident in 2016 and was subsequently remanded until the 24th after being produced in court. In this backdrop, the magistrate approved the CID's request to record a statement in this regard from IGP Pujit Jasundra, who functioned as the DIG of Western Province at the time. When the hit and run case against former Minister Patali Champika Ranavaka was taken up for hearing today, the Colombo Crimes Division informed court that in the course of their investigations, IGP Pujit Jasundra's name had featured prominently. In this backdrop, the CCD requested the court to grant approval for the recording of a statement from the IGP who remains in the remand custody on charges relating to the Easter attacks. The Colombo magistrate subsequently granted the Colombo Crimes Division permission to do so. The CCD also informed their magistrate that a total of 20 SIM cards have been recovered for which a court order was requested to gain call records from the relevant mobile operators. Permission for this request was also granted. The Colombo Magistrates Court issued an order to the Controller General of Immigration and Emigration to enforce a travel ban on former Minister Dr. Rajatha Sena Ratna as it will hinder the investigation with regard to white van abductions allegations made by the Minister himself. Meanwhile, additional Magistrate Priyantha Leonagay today fixed the 30th of December as the date to hear the ex-minister's anticipatory bail application filed to prevent his arrest in this regard. The ruling was made when the ex-minister's second anticipatory bail application was taken up for consideration before the Colombo Chief Magistrate today. Former Health Minister Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna filed an anticipatory bail application to prevent him being arrested over allegations made during a media briefing regarding white van abductions and robbery of gold belonging to late LTTE leader Velupille Prabhagaran. The Colombo Chief Magistrate, however, rejected Dr. Sena Ratna's anticipatory bail application when it was taken up for consideration on Friday, stating that the imposition of the clauses relating to the charges the ex-minister seeks anticipatory bail on, granting bail will carry a risk, as it could be applicable to any other offence. Dr. Sena Ratna, however, went on to file yet another anticipatory bail application, along with a newly amended affidavit in this regard. When the case was taken up today, President's Counsel Navaratna Bandara representing Dr. Rajita Sinaratna said that the first anticipatory bail application was rejected by the court based on a mere technical defect. The President's Counsel also noted that his client feels a reasonable fear of arrest on charges under Articles 485 and 192 of the Penal Code while highlighting that these clauses are included in the newly amended bail application. Furthermore, PC Bandara stated that MPs and members of the Buddhist clergy are making derogatory statements about the arrest of Rajita Sena Ratna through various media networks. 
As per Section 21 of the Bail Act, PC Bandara requested court to set a date for the hearing of the anticipatory bail application as well as to issue notice to the respondent party. Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Apiris, however, appearing in court, stated that the CID who has been named a respondent has sought assistance of the Attorney General. The Deputy Solicitor General also noted that the Attorney General objected to notice being issued to the respondent party pertaining to the bail application. PC Bandara, however, objected to the Deputy Solicitor General's submissions regarding the bail application. The Deputy Solicitor General also emphasised that the court should be mindful of the message being communicated to society through such anticipatory bail applications. The Deputy Solicitor General stated that the applicants of the bail application appear to have misused the specific legal status of the anticipatory bail set out in Section 21 of the Bail Act. The Deputy Solicitor General also noted that the anticipatory bail application is not a shield or a licence that allows criminals to escape the law. After submissions from both parties, Colombo Additional Magistrate Priyanthali Anagay, however, said that if requirements of Section 21 of the Bail Act have been satisfied, a magistrate holds the power to set a date to consider an anticipatory bail application. Additional Magistrate Priyanthali Anagay stated that law does not stop an anticipatory bail application if it is not limited to the facts of a B report as well as even during the absence of a B report. Accordingly, due to the bail application meeting all requirements of Section 21 of the Bail Act, Additional Magistrate Leonage ordered notice be issued to the respondents of the case and scheduled 30th December for the next hearing of the bail application. Meanwhile, upon a request made by the CID this evening, the Colombo Magistrates Court ordered the Controller General of the Department of Immigration and Emigration to enforce a travel ban on Dr. Sena Ratna. The report filed by the CID highlights that the overseas travel of the ex-minister will hinder investigations as the media briefing conducted regarding the white van abductions was carried out under his patronage. While the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday attacks today questioned Superintendent of Police for the Colombo North Division Sanjeeva Bandara, they warned him on providing falsified statements during the inquiry. He was also questioned regarding his inaction towards an order given by the DIG of Colombo to tighten security at Catholic churches at the time. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing into the Easter Sunday attacks had summoned Sanjeeva Bandara, the superintendent of the Colombo North Division. The commission began today's proceedings by inquiring on the reason to why the superintendent had failed to inform the OICs in the district regarding the tightening of security at Catholic churches as informed to him by DIG Lalit Patinayaka on the 20th of April 2019. In response, he stated that he was unable to make phone calls due to heavy lightning but was shown otherwise when the Commission presented evidence showing he had made and received calls at the time. When he was questioned as to whether he had received documents regarding the attack prior to its occurrence, he responded that he had only received them on the 22nd. The Commission conducted inquiries for over two hours regarding a letter that was sent to the DIG of Colombo from the Superintendent's Division, in which he had previously denied having placed his signature and that the format for the date that was used in the letter was not what he followed. However, the Superintendent had admitted to his previously denied claims at the conclusion of the two-hour-long inquiry. The chairman of the commission then warned the superintendent that providing false statements is a punishable offence given that he was under oath. Now, as investigations continue to determine reasons for the security lapses leading up to the Easter Sunday terror attack, the Attorney General's Department informed court today that although crucial statements need to be recorded from high-profile political figures related to the incident, cooperation has not been forthcoming. He added that the department expects to also record statements from former ministers Rauf Hakim and Rashad Badiuddin in relation to the attacks. Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Apiris, representing the Criminal Investigation Department, told the court that despite requests having been made for the recording of statement from the former President, Prime Minister and the current Speaker of the Parliament, cooperation has not been forthcoming. Deputy Solicitor General Pierce also added that if the situation remains unchanged in this regard, the department expects to use the fullest power of the courts to ensure such crucial statements are recorded under any circumstances. He added that the Criminal Investigations Department is also making preparations to record statements from former ministers Rashad Badiuddin and Rauf Hakim as well. 
The magistrate was also informed of plans to record a statement from Archbishop of Colombo, Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, soon after the Christmas season. It was also revealed that statements have also been recorded from three Deputy Inspectors General of the Police Department and the Cabinet Secretary. And we'll find out what the Governor has to say about the Kantale Sugar Factory and the report other than on a filed after this short break. back to the news. The report on the dilapidated condition of the Kantale sugar factory brought to you by Adha Derana yesterday was able to draw the attention of the Eastern Province Governor Anuradha Yahampad as she uh, inspected the factory premises today. The Governor assured the public of measures to revive the factory and bring it back to its former glory as a vital economic lifeline for residents of the area. Constructed in 1957 as a grant from the government of Czechoslovakia, the factory was opened in 1960, providing job opportunities and contributing to the economic development of the area. After functioning as a profit-earning venture until 1986, the factory was shut down subsequently and garnered some mention in a high-profile bribery case, which saw two former state employees, including the former president's chief of staff, sentenced to prison terms. Following our report on the dilapidated state of the sugar factory, Governor of the Eastern Province Anuradha Yahampat made an inspection visit to the factory. ඒ <laughs> Also in business news, Fitch Ratings has revised the outlook on Salon Electricity Board's national long-term rating to negative from stable and has affirmed the rating at double A plus Lanka. Now the outlook revision following the outlook revision on Sri Lanka's B long-term foreign currency issued default rating to negative from stable. The rating on CB, which is fully state-owned, is equalized with that of Sri Lankan sovereign to reflect strong linkages in line with Fitch's parent and subsidiary rating linkage criteria. The equalization takes into consideration CEB's strategic importance to Sri Lanka in ensuring power security and supply of affordable electricity to the public. In its rating drivers, statement, Fitch assesses linkages between CEB and the state to be strong, reflecting explicit guarantees and financial support through equity infusions and debt funding. In addition, the statement highlighted the fact that the government also implicitly guarantees CEB's project loans, which account for around 80% of, it, of its outstanding debt. These loans are extended by bilateral and multilateral agencies and routed through the government for power infrastructure development. CB's strategic importance to the state stems from its position as the country's roll grid operator and distributor and the generator of 80% of Sri Lanka's electricity. Taking you to the Colombo Stock Exchange today, equities closed 0.21% lower at the end of trading today with banks' equities recording a fall following a, a moratorium on small and medium scale loans, provisional data showed. The main all share price index closed 12.92 points down at 6,031.81. The ASPI was volatile throughout the day, breaching a daily high of 6,048.30 in the opening minutes and closed at 
the daily low. The S&P SL20 index, the more liquid uh, index of the Colombo Stock Exchange, closed 0.55% or 16.09% down at 2,929.80. Market turnover was 388.7 million rupees, while 49 stocks gained and 68 fell today. Here's a brief report to follow. The secondary market year curve remained broadly unchanged while the overall market witnessed ultra-thin volumes amidst limited activity. The central bank announced an issue of Rs 13.5 billion worth of treasury bills at the T-bill auction that will be held tomorrow. In the equity market, the boards concluded the day in red, persisting the negative sentiment for the fourth consecutive trading session, mainly attributable to the price losses in distilleries and bookie. The parcel trade made in John Keir's holdings accounted for 43% of turnover, while foreigners were net buyers amidst moderate foreign in participation. Now, Sri Lanka's rupee remains steady at 181 rupees and 10 to 20 cents against the US dollar in the spot market today. Here's a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. We'll return with your international news after this short break. Closer to home, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi led a rally yesterday for his Hindu Nationalist Party in the capital after days of violent protests across India against a new citizenship law, critics say, discriminates against Muslims. New Delhi's state election early next year will be the first major electoral test for Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party in the wake of the mass demonstrations seen after Parliament cleared the Citizenship Amendment Act on the 11th of December. Prime Minister Modi said the Muslims who were born on Indian soil or whose ancestors are children of Malwa India, brothers and sisters, they have nothing to do with citizenship law, unquote, adding that his government introduces reforms without any religious bias. Several thousand people took part in Modi's rally where the accused were he accused the opposition of distorting facts to trigger protests. At least 21 people have died during clashes with police as thousands of people came out of the streets in towns and cities across the country to protest, making the biggest challenge to Modi's leadership since he first swept to power in 2014. And we take you to sports news. Uh, commencing day five of the second test versus Pakistan on 212 runs for the loss of seven wickets, Sri Lanka didn't bother the scorers, failing to some um, inspired bowling in just 16 deliveries to end up losing the match by 263 runs. Paceman Nazim Shah became the youngest pace bowler to take a five wicket haul after trapping Vishwa Fernando leg before to seal the win. The man of the match and man of the series trophies went to Abid Ali for his 174 runs in the second innings that set the stage for Pakistan's mammoth 500 run score. The host's second innings ended up a run fest with Pakistan's top four batsmen all scoring centuries on the way to a score that was a bit too much for Sri Lanka. Pakistan clinch the Osaka Batteries Cup 1-0. And that wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for watching. Good night.